Okay, then now we are going to look at a genome. And what is a genome? A genome is an organism complete set of DNA comprising of nuclear and mitochondrial DNA. So when we say the genome of a particular organism, it means the summation or the sum of a DNA that are found in that particular organisms. So genome is DNA, but the sum of the whole DNA. Remember that in the cells, we have some organelles where this DNA is confined. We have DNA in the nucleus, we have DNA in mitochondria, and we also have DNA in the chloroplast in the case of plant. So if you add off, if you sum all this DNA, the, you sum the DNA in the nucleus plus that of the mitochondria and the chloroplast in the case of plant, then you have a genome. So that the genome, you add the summation or the complete set of the DNA that are found in each living organism is what you call a genome. And a, a total hereditary material present in an organism. And uh, of course, it is a hereditary material. So we inherit some of the characters from our parent because of this genome. So we look like our parents and sometimes we look, to, we look different. And this is because of the DNA, that is the genome. And the genome, it might be either DNA or RNA because we have some organisms that only have viral genome. That is, they only have virus, uh, sorry, they only have RNA as their genome in the case of virus. And then genome is a totality of chromosome. So some organisms, we have organisms with different number of chromosomes. So when you add, or you, when you have the total number of this chromosome, you add them off, then you also have a genome. Like for example, in human being, we have 46 chromosomes. In chimpanzee, there are 48 chromosomes. And in Drosophila melanogaster, we have six chromosomes. So the summation or the sum of all these number of chromosomes is what you call genome. And this number of chromosomes is unique to a particular organism or any cell within the organisms. So, and one very interesting thing is each genome contain all the information needed to build or maintain that organisms. Assuming now you want to produce or you want to get someone, of course, if you can get his DNA or his genome, you can do that because the genome is the language of life. It's like the book of life. So if you can just get the genome, you can get everything concerning that particular species of living organism. So with just the genome, I can produce you. With that genome, I can produce myself. That is the genome because the, all the information that are needed to build and construct a particular living organisms, as well as the maintenance of that organisms are there in the genome. And then we have genome and genotypes. How are they different? Are they the same? Genome is a total hereditary material. That is the whole of the DNA that are found in a living organisms while the genotype is like a some portion or a small portion of the genome. In human beings, there are 25,000 genes. So one of those characters or each of the genes is responsible for controlling a particular character. So now in this case, genotype is one of the character that are found in the genome. It means that in 25,000 genes that we have in the human genome, one of that gene is responsible for controlling the genotype. And uh, that is why we said genotype is a subset of genome. The genome is like the universal set where there are a lot of other characters. There are a lot of other behaviors, traits. So you can just get one particular character from the genome. So that is why we said genotype is a subset is some portion of the genome. And then apart from then, okay, this is actually how living organisms or how the genome or the locations where this genome are found. This is a cell. 
and in a cell we have nucleus and inside this nucleus we have DNA. That is why we call it nuclear DNA. And also at the same time, we also have mitochondria. So in this mitochondria, we also have DNA. So that is why we call it mitochondrial DNA. And one very interesting thing is that we should all know that in a cell, we have a, we have a nucleus and inside that nucleus, we have a chromosome and in that chromosome, in that chromosome, this is a typical example of chromosome. This is a typical example of chromosome. So in that chromosome, we have a histone protein which tightly wrapped this DNA. And the histone protein is actually positive charge because of the presence of two important amino acids which make it positive charge. And these amino acids are lysine and arginine. So they are highly positively charged and that is what makes the histone positive charge. And then the DNA is negative charge and this is due to the further of phosphate group. And that is why there is a strong interaction between histone protein and the DNA that are found in the chromosome. So, okay. and then we have what you call omics approach. And in this omics approach, we have what you call, um, in the omics approach, we have genome and this genome the study of the genome or the study of the genome of particular living organisms is called genomics. And then this DNA is converted into a transcript form called messenger RNA. And the messenger RNA, the study of the whole total mRNA that are found in a cell is called transcriptomics. It is transcriptomics is the study of all the number of mRNA that are found in a particular cell. So that is the meaning of transcriptomics. And then the mRNA also converts to a protein, which is called proteome. So the study, or oh, the, 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 the studying the total number of proteins that are found in a particular cell is what you call proteomics. That is the proteomics approach. And then, of course, you have metabolites, metabolites, the proteins, and uh, other metabolites like carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids. So, when you are studying the whole of this, the whole of this in a particular cell, then you are studying the metabolomics. So, you see that from the DNA, we have RNA, then from RNA, we have proteins, and from there, we have those proteins, and the proteins is what actually give a specific functions because it depends on the types of the proteins that translate from the messenger RNA. Like for example, we can actually, from the DNA, we can have a gene that can produce hemoglobin. And of course, from that DNA, we will get mRNA hemoglobin. And from mRNA hemoglobin, we can get the hemoglobin itself. And the hemoglobin is what make the red blood cells to functions the way it is and also the shape it has. Because proteins that we produce in our body is responsible for the structural architecture of each and every cell as well as the function of the cell. So it's because of the hemoglobin that is produced from a particular specific messenger RNA. That is why red blood cell is by concave in shape. And at the same time, it's because of that hemoglobin, that is why red blood cell is responsible for transporting oxygen from circulation. It's transport oxygen in circulation. So that is that. Then if you are studying the whole of the proteins that are produced through the central dogma of molecular biology with some other, my, with some other macromolecules or other molecules in all, you are studying metabolomics, and of course, this carbohydrate. Like, if you have carbohydrate, for that glycoproteins, the proteins itself, and the lipid, it what actually make the phenotypic appearance of each and every living organism. Like, we as a human, we have nose, we have two eyes, we have legs, we have hands, we talk, we communicate, we understand, we read, we write, and all these are confined here. They are all from the central dogma of molecular biology down to metabolomics approach.
And then we have these different types of genome. We have different types of genome. And these different types of genome, we have, uh, we have prokaryotic genomes. Yes, in prokaryotes, prokaryotes of host are organism that doesn't have nucleus and membrane bound organelles, but their DNA is double stranded. The DS means here is double stranded. And the DNA or the genome from prokaryotes is circular, is circular, is circular in shape. And the number of chromosomes that are found in the prokaryotic genome is one. They have only one chromosome. And of course, they doesn't have nucleus. Rather, they have what you call nucleoids. So the nucleoids is where the DNA or the genome of prokaryotes are found. Then the eukaryotic cell, in the case of eukaryotic genome, the DNA is double-stranded and it is linear. So you see there is similarity here in terms of prokaryotics and eukaryotics. All the DNA are double-stranded. But in the case of the shift, it is circular in the case of prokaryotic cell and linear in the case of eukaryotes. And the number of chromosomes are many like for example, in human, we have 46 chromosomes and they only have one chromosome. And then in eukaryotic cell, there is a genome, sorry, there is a nucleus. And then in prokaryotic, there is no nucleus, rather nucleoids. Then this, the, there is also organelle genome, organelle genome. So we have DNA in the chloroplast you also have DNA in the mitochondria apart from the nucleus. So these are the called organelle genome. But one very interesting thing that we should all know that the concentration, that is the amount of the DNA that are found in chloroplasts and mitochondria is less than that of the nucleus. And then the next one is the virus genome. Then for the virus genome, their DNA is, they have SS and DS. The SS means single-stranded or double-stranded. So their DNA can be single-stranded or double-stranded. And their RNA also as well, their RNA as well is either single-stranded or double-stranded RNA. And this genome, that is the DNA and RNA are fact under a glycoprotein complex. So there is a glycoprotein complex, there is a glycoprotein complex that actually bound to this genome and that what make the virus as a virus. And of course, in the virus, they doesn't have a very complex system. Some of the viruses they only have these glycoproteins and RNA or glycoproteins and DNA. That's what make them. And that is all they have. That is why we consider them as obligate interest in our side because they don't have any machinery that make them to survive. Rather, these 100% survive on other organisms for their growth and development. And then, the next thing that we are going to look at is telomia. Telomia is a structure that is usually found at the end of the DNA. And this telomere is very, very important and essential in maintaining the stability of the DNA. And in fact, the shortening of this telomere is associated with a lot of disease complications. In fact, they are even the ones that are contributing to aging. We age because there is a telomere shortening. And this telomere shortening is associated with a lot of these complications. An example of this is complication, if we have short telomere or we have our telomere shortening, there's a likelihood that we can we will, ha we will have oxidative stress, cellular senescence, we will age. And of course, aging is associated with atherosclerosis coronary heart diseases, and then we also have heart failure, stroke, and peripheral artery disease. So telomere is very, very important. It's protect, or it protect the DNA and the genome of a particular living organism. So as a telomere shortening, it means that you are losing some nucleotides. Therefore, it will start now affecting some of your genes. And as a result of that, you will end up producing truncated proteins. And truncated proteins, of course, 
they're associated with a lot of the disease complication. So I think that is all for the genome and uh, we'll, we'll introduce the next video.